Can this giant pill actually solve most of your espresso brewing ailments or does it unnecessarily complicate things? Before we get started, we bought this product with our own money. However, Gabor, the owner, was kind enough to give us a 20% discount, which we super appreciate. As always, we'll be sharing our honest opinion with all of you. One last thing, thank you so much for the overwhelming support with Sophie. We sold out in just three days and we grossly underestimated demand. We will be restocking soon, so if you missed the first drop, then be sure to get on the waitlist. The link is in the description below. With this standardization, we can actually share recipes and techniques in a more meaningful way. And this is why we're so excited for people all over the world to get their hands on this brewer. But now, let's talk about the Smart Espresso Profiler. If you followed us for a hot second, you know we're suckers for manual brewing. The sense of having created something with your own two hands is deeply satisfying. And to think that there's coffee at the end of this ritual just makes the whole process dang near perfect. So what's missing? Well, the short answer would be data. You and I, we're both human and with that comes a host of problems. One of which being able to repeat a task precisely without errors or changes. We call this human error and is why manual espresso can be so frustrating at times, especially if you're like me and crave consistency and repeatability. Imagine this scenario. You're perfectly dialed in and you pull the best shot of your life with your lever espresso machine. You then pull another shot without changing anything, but it runs a bit quicker and you have no clue why. It also doesn't taste as good. If this sort of thing bothers you deeply, then the Smart Espresso Profiler or SEP is definitely going to pique your interest. So let's dive in and take a closer look at how this giant pill can help you fix all of your spro woes. Oh, and we'll be pulling some really interesting profiles along the way and doing a taste comparison at the end. The results are pretty insane, so you're going to want to stick around for that. First, let's look at the hardware. The Smart Espresso Profiler is this large pill-shaped device made by a company called Kavi Kolmar in Hungary. It houses a Bluetooth-enabled pressure transducer and a battery to power it. So basically, all this thing does is take the input pressure, which in this case would be the pressure at which you're brewing your shot, and transmits it to an app over Bluetooth with little to no latency. That's about it. The real magic happens on the app, which does amazing things with this data, but we'll get to that a little later on. The installation on a manual lever machine like the Flare 58 or the Pro 2 is super simple and requires little to no tools. This version here needed a hex allen key and a spanner and took about 30 seconds to set up. Most E61 machines are compatible and again, really simple to get set up. I was told that the battery would last three to six months depending on usage. We've pulled a couple of shots every day for about a month now and the level still reads 100%, so I don't think this is going to fall short of this claim. A tip that I got from Gabor, the creator of this product, is to close the app fully once you're done using it. On iOS, that would be to swipe up and swipe away the app. That really helps prolong the battery life. It is a special type of battery which isn't available in India and that's a bit annoying. But it does come with a spare one, so when the first one does eventually run out, I have enough time to figure out how to source another one from Europe. Now, there are a couple of variations of this product in that you can just get the SEP or you can get it with the analog gauge like the one we have here. We highly recommend this version because it gives you the option to brew without having to use the app. And trust me, you don't always want to be faffing with an app to be able to brew and know what pressure you're at. The only thing we noticed is a slight lag on the analog gauge, which isn't there on the stock one. Now, this could be due to the T-splitter, which pushes the gauge a little further away from the plunger, but we don't have any way to connect the flare gauge to the T-splitter to confirm this, so it's just speculation. That being said, the lag is minimal and you get used to it very quickly. And luckily, the digital reading from the SEP is ultra responsive and doesn't seem to be affected by this at all. So that's the hardware for you. But what do you say we move on to the really fun stuff, the software? If you own Smart Scales or any other smart coffee product, the chances that you've encountered a terribly designed app with even worse UX is probably very, very high. So you'd be happy to know that the SEP app is truly a breath of fresh air. It's beautifully simple and clean in spite of the sheer amount of data that it's giving you. And that's no easy task. 
start playing around with it and dive into the menus and you realize how feature packed it is and how deep the functionality is. So let's take a closer look at what makes this software so special. Now, before we even jump into the app, you should know that it's free, which is pretty amazing for how good this app is. So you may be wondering what the point of the app being free is if you can't use it without the hardware. But you can. If you happen to own smart scales like the Akaya Luna, you can connect it to the app and do flow profiling without needing to buy this hardware. Fire out the app and you're greeted with this full screen landscape view of a graph with the pressure in bars and weight in grams on the Y axis and the time in seconds on the X axis. What we like to do is toggle to display flow instead of weight on the graph. And this can easily be done by jumping into the options. To the right of this, you see the pressure readout with an accuracy down to 0.01 bars. You even have a virtual gauge with a needle that lines up with your analog gauge if you have one. Below that is a button that takes you to history, which we'll look at in a second. And lastly, you have two icons that indicate the connection status of the SEP hardware and your smart skills. On the top left, we see Brew, which is the page that we're currently on. To the right of that, the status, which currently reads waiting for device and will turn to ready when the connection is established. And to the far right is the start button to start your Brew. If we had to nitpick, this title, status and button are all in the same font and size and two are even in the same color a little more visual distinction would be great. Right in the middle of the graph, you have an option to tap edit and add brew notes in as much detail as you'd like. Below that, you can put in your dose. Adding in the dose allows you to accurately get the ratio and other information once the shot is complete. Setup here too is very simple. Tap on the menu, open up devices, and once your SCP device number shows up, just tap on it and you're connected. That's it. Pairing your scale is also really simple. Now that we're set up, let's pull our first shot. And for this, we'll be doing a classic lever profile where we ramp up to nine bars and gently ramp down to zero over the course of the shot. We've dosed 18 grams and we're looking to get 36 to 38 out in about 35 seconds. Hit start and gradually ramp up to nine bars in about three to five seconds. Hold for a few seconds and start a gradual decline. Keep an eye on the flow rate, the brown line to see how things are going. You can clearly see the gentle ramp down on the pressure graph. We finish the shot out by going all the way down to zero as we reach our target weight of 38 grams. As you can see, we're given tons of data, but it's really well presented and not at all overwhelming. Okay, we have two more profiles to go and we'll be comparing the three shots at the end. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. It's really crazy how big of an impact the profile can have on the shot. But now let's move on to the next section of the app. Open up the menu and below brew, we have history. This is a log of every brew you've ever made and it also comes preloaded with some really interesting profiles. And that brings us to probably the coolest feature of this app and that is using past brews as a reference. If you pulled a shot you really enjoyed, then you can set that as a reference and boom, you have that curve to follow along. Provided you've got the grind size and puck prep right, you can now actually recreate that shot and get something that tastes near identical. What's even cooler are these numbers here that show you drift values for both pressure and flow and range from zero to 100 with 100 being perfectly accurate. So. The closer you are to 100, the more accurately you followed the pressure and flow curves of the reference. Even with all of this information, it's not easy to replicate a shot. So to try and do it without it is like shooting in the dark. Cool. So let's try and recreate a blooming espresso shot that we pulled a few days ago and loved. This profile is particularly good with lighter roasts as the fine grind and long bloom really help upping the extraction. So what we're doing here is ramping up to around four to five bars of pre-infusion pressure to allow the puck to fully saturate. Then slowly lowering the pressure as we allow the puck to bloom for 30 seconds.
Once this is done, we quickly ramp up to hopefully nine bars if you got the grind size right and vary the pressure to keep the flow steady. Now, blooming shots can be pulled longer and work well with threes to one ratios too, but for this coffee, two is to one work perfectly. It's not a particularly easy shot to pull, but if done right, the results in the cup are worth it. Anyway, that's two shots down and one to go, then we taste. So here you can see we've used the reference curve to follow along and we've done a fairly decent job. So we've created something that's near identical to what we drank a little earlier this week, which is crazy. Moving right along, let's take a look at all the options. You can toggle between bar and PSI for the pressure readout. You can choose to have floating labels which look like this, but we prefer the fixed ones at the top. This next one you saw earlier where we switched from weight to graphing flow. Next, you can set the pressure threshold and you'll get a warning if you exceed it. You can disable auto stop, which means you'll have to manually hit stop after you're done brewing. Set zero is used if you're not applying any pressure and it doesn't read zero. So at that point, you can just tap this button and it'll reset it to the, the right setting. Show tutorial does this. And this last one I'm assuming has something to do with connectivity, but I could be wrong. I've also never fiddled with it and everything's worked just fine. So I would just leave it alone. So that's the app and hopefully you can appreciate the amount of work that has gone into making it so intuitive and user friendly. But now let's quickly talk about price and who this device is for before pulling the last shot with probably the most unconventional profile. Super interesting stuff. It should be fairly obvious by now that we really like the SEP, but let's talk about price for a second. This is not a cheap device and if you plan to get it for say the Flare Pro 2, then you'll probably be spending more for the SEP than you did for the Flare. The one that we bought here comes in at 525 US dollars, which is nearly as expensive as the Flare 58. So is it worth it? Well, that depends entirely on the kind of coffee person that you are. If you seek complete control and want the ability to have access to data that will allow you to troubleshoot far more accurately and thereby help you improve your espresso, then there isn't another device that we can think of that does this. You will have to spend six to seven X more and get yourself a decent. It's definitely not for everyone, but for what it does and how well it does it, the SEP is incredible. It's also an excellent QC tool if you run a cafe with lever machines. And lastly, if you're doing research and trying to gain a deeper understanding of espresso, then the data that this thing provides is invaluable. So now that we've covered everything, let's pull a turbo shot and wrap this one up. For those of you who haven't heard about this profile, it's based on a recent scientific breakthrough with espresso that showed that you can get much more consistency shot to shot by grinding a little coarser and using a much higher flow rate. So for this shot, we'll be dosing 17 grams and aiming to get 51 out in under 20 seconds at six bars of pressure. This pull is going to look ugly, but the results in the cup will surprise you. But we'll talk about that after we make some espresso. Okay, so we've cleaned up a little bit and got the three shots in three cups. What do you say we taste? First up, we have the lever shot. Let's go ahead and give this a taste. Oof, that's, it's, it's got so much body and texture. It actually has sort of like chocolate and caramel notes that come in to the forefront. And the, the fruity notes, so this coffee is a fairly fruity coffee, but those notes are sort of muted and pushed to the back, which is really interesting. And um, this is the kind of shot that would pair really well with milk. Next up, we have the Blooming Espresso, which is a fairly challenging shot to pull. But the results, as you'll see now, are definitely worth it, especially if you're dealing with lighter roasts and you, you want to get that higher extraction. Wow. Okay. How do, how do I describe this? So, so basically a little less body than the first cup, but the fruity notes are now up front and present. There's a lot of stone fruit that's coming through. The, there's, there's a little more acidity. There's a little more clarity in the cup. Actually, there's a lot more clarity in the cup. Now, blooming shots can be pulled longer, but for this particular coffee, the two is to one work really well. So this is a really nicely extracted coffee. There's a little bit of astringency in the finish, but it's fine. Nothing obnoxious. So overall, really tasty cup of coffee, something that would be perfect drunk neat or diluted down to an Americano. Next up, we have the turbo shot. Now, this did run a touch faster than we wanted, but let's see how it tastes.
Oh, wow. That's, that's crazy. I mean, I wish you could taste this because it tastes like a completely different coffee. Yes, it's, it, it's got similarities to the Blooming, but it tastes like a completely different coffee to the Lever profile. And that's what's really, really fascinating about this whole experiment. Lot more acidity, but balanced out by tons of sweetness. Very, very fruity cup. And there's a lot of floral notes that are coming through now, which uh, weren't really present in the Lever profile and were sort of like hinted at in the in the Blooming Espresso. But here it's up front and center. I'm getting none of those those chocolate or cocoa notes. It's it's a very, very vibrant cup and just like a straight up fruit bomb. So that's the turbo shot for you. Definitely less body than these two, but still very smooth, very, very enjoyable cup. And you can just have it neat. And again, if it, if it's a bit intense for you, you can dilute it down. But there you have it. Those are the three shots. OK, this gets me every single time and is what makes coffee and espresso more specifically so interesting. The difference in the cup with the same coffee and three different profiles is significant. Each one brings out and highlights different characteristics in the cup. And to have a device like the SEP show you exactly what you've done to arrive at what you're tasting is just brilliant. And what's even better is you can now pick the one you like the most and actually recreate it. Whether you own the SEP or not, this is an experiment you should absolutely try. It's so much fun and you will gain a whole new appreciation for this amazing drink and just how much science there is behind it. And on that highly caffeinated note, it's time to end. We had an absolute blast making this video and doing all the experiments and tinkering that went into it. We really hope you enjoyed it and would love to hear your thoughts on this crazy little product. Let us know in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and brew Aramse.